that are in that. So there may be people in there talking. Uh, now you know as much as I know because I got an email yesterday and, and that, that was sort of, that was sort of uh, uh, the gist of it. So I think so, yeah. I wasn't told, well, you're being told now, right? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, was, I was told this, I was told this, I got an email like 5.30 yesterday. Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. Well, then, oh, no, you're not. All right. At any rate, here's what we're going to be doing for the next few classes. Um, we're going to be taking control over the layout of our page, all right? And it, it, it's funny because every semester after we go so far, students uh, are, are, I have at least some students that are sort of chomping at the bit to, to, to do more than, than what, what we've, been, we've been covering in class. In other words, most of our, um, most of our uh, page designs have looked very similar. In other words, they, they flow, they start at the top, and they just flow down. Whereas some students might want to do some sort of structure where you have maybe something off to the side, or have a banner, or center their code, or, or any number of things. So that's where we're going to start this. Um, and we're going to talk about uh, a few basic concepts today. Uh, we will certainly go into more depth. This isn't a one-day thing. This is uh, maybe a couple weeks worth of stuff. And one of the ingredients of this is going to be the issue of browser compatibility. All right. Um, there are some folks that have run into browser compatibility issues already. For example, if you try to put a border on a body, tag. Um, Internet Explorer doesn't seem to like that, at least the versions of Internet Explorer that we run. Interesting thing is, is that really doesn't affect the functionality of the page. It looks a little different, but I wouldn't necessarily sweat it. You're liable to run into other issues, though, that are bigger, where text overlaps other text or any number of different things, which, which are bigger issues. And, and so we will become more aware of browser compatibility issues, uh, and we will be, uh, and testing for them will be more critical. In addition to that, in addition to that, uh, we'll talk about standards, and we will talk about validating our code using validators. And one of the reasons for that is that is sort of uh, one of the first steps that you can take in ensuring uh, cross-browser compatibility. It's not the only step you can take for a number of different reasons, but um, all these things are sort of a consequence and sort of fall uh, into place because our discussion is going to be how to, um, how to, how to take control over our, our uh, pages. There will be a little bit of new HTML and a lot of new CSS. There really will, in essence, only be two new tags in HTML that we're going to discuss. And we'll discuss one of them today. The other one, I don't know when we're going to discuss. Let's start with the new tag uh, in HTML. And this tag sometimes is confusing for people um, because unlike other tags, it doesn't really have a specific purpose. All right? It's really used just to group stuff together. For example, the A tag is used for a link. We all know that. The P tag is used for a paragraph of text. The H1 is used for a top-level heading. And we could go down the line and we could describe the usage of all these different things. New tag that we're going to talk about today is the div tag. Div as in div. And what the div tag simply means is a division or a section of the page. So it's used to group things together that we want to treat as a unit. All right. Let's look at, let's see, the example I did last time, I think. No, that's not it. Um, a 
let's look at this example. All right. Now, in this example, if we were talking about this and, and talking about our wireframes, like we said last time, um, we could say that there's really um, three main sections, or actually four main sections of our page, right? There's our navigation, which is on the top, which right now only has one link on it, but it could have more links on it, right? There's a heading. There's the actual content of the page. And then finally, there's a credit down here to where I found those images. So logically, each one of those forms a section of the page. In other words, that link up there to, to Simba, I could add more links to it as I get more cats, right? And there could be 10 of them going across or whatever. The, the, the banner, my cats, I could add something to that. I could, uh, you know, uh, add maybe a, a generic picture or a background or whatever. And so on down the line. The point of this is, is each one of these sort of logically forms a unit. Navigation. Banner, content area, and then finally credits. This thingy ain't working, so let me hold up a, a picture of what our wireframe might look like for this. Our wireframe might look like this for this particular page. All right. I don't know if this is going to be useless or not. All right. Pardon me? Oh, that's okay. That's okay. We have a navigation section, a banner, the body, and finally the credits. And that's really, in a nutshell, what this page is, co is comprised of. Now, if I think about that, I want to treat it as a unit, right? In other words, if I want the navigation, if I want to move the navigation, I'm going to want to move all the navigation, right? I'm not just going to want to move part of it. If I want to uh, change the position of the credits, I want to change the position of everything that's in that credit area. If I want to make the credits a smaller type, I am going to make all the credits a smaller type, and so on. So. These are distinct sections of the page that we want to treat as a unit. And what we can do is we can group those pieces together in div tags. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go in to this page. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to put around my distinct sections div tags. We'll sort of build this example. In other words, the top line is my navigation, the, the link to Simba's page. Let's go in and let's also put a link to Clio's page just to make it consistent so that we have both links. And just for laughs, I'm going to put it in as an unordered list. Because really, effectively, this is a list of links. So I'll put these links in as an unordered list. I'm putting these on because I'm sort of making a template almost that later on I can go and copy. And maybe I'd have other pages in here. Maybe, for example, I would have a home page in here. In fact, I'm going to go and change this. I'm going to save it as 
index.html. So we understand that this isn't specific to the Clio page, but this is for all my pages. This is going to be a template that we're going to go and clone. At any rate, this is a navigation section of my page. I'm going to want to treat those links as a unit. All right? If I move them around, if I make them horizontal, if I make them vertical, whatever I do to those links, I want to do it to all of them because they're a unit. They're the same thing. They're, they're na my navigation links. This, I'm going to say, is my banner. In other words, it's a banner that explains what this page is about. And just to enhance the banner a little bit, I'm going to put in a smaller picture of Simba in the banner. But anyhow, these two things taken together form my banner. All right? This is going to be the main content page. Oops. And then finally, this is going to be my credits on the bottom. Okay, let's look at this. And it's not going to look terribly different than what I had before. I made a couple small changes, but if I go and look at this, that's what it looks like. Here's my navigation. Here is my banner. Here is the content of this particular page. And again, I'll, I'll leave this content in here now, but know that that'll be different on each page, right? And finally, here is my credits. Now, it doesn't look really any different before. Yes? Yeah, exactly. If we want to do something with positioning, we're, we're building up to that. The first thing that we want to do in order to do that is to break it down into sections. So that's what we're doing with the divs. All right? We're breaking it down. We're breaking the page down into divisions or sections that correspond to the the, the, the things on my wireframe. Remember my wireframe being this that has the navigation, banner, body, and credits. So that's our, that's our wireframe. That's our basic layout that we've designed. And now we're going to go and we're going to start styling this. I'm going to do, for good measure, I'm going to add one more div that's going to wrap around everything. Uh, that's often done and is called a container div. This will get around the issue that folks had with not being able to put a border on a body tag in Internet Explorer. Now, again, no difference in the way the page looks. What we're going to do now, though, is we're going to start styling this page. And we're going to start styling the divs individually. All right? In other words, we might want to treat the background different than, or the background of the navigation different than the background of the, um, of the body. Uh, or or the, the, the content area. We might want to treat the, 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 bo uh, the banner different than the other elements. We might want to treat the credits different. Now, in the past, we've done style rules that look like this.
where we specified an HTML tag and then we specified style rules. That's not going to cut it for here, right? Because each of our sections is a div, right? And we don't want them all to look the same. So if I put a style rule in for div, If I put in a style for div, all my divs are going to get them, and I don't want that. Maybe I want my navigation to have that color, but not the banner. Maybe I want the content area to have it, or the credits to have it, but not the other. So I have to be able to refine my style rule to be able to point to specific things on the page, and not say, hey, I want all divs to look a certain way, to say, hey, I want this thing on the page to look a certain way. And I can do that with IDs. So what I can do in the code is I can go in and say and assign each of these divs an ID that's going to describe what it's there for. In other words, this div is sort of a container. It contains all the other divs. Sometimes people also call it a wrapper because it wraps around. You know, it's like a you know, wrapping a Christmas present. It contains everything. This div, I'm going to give an ID of navigation to, or just nav. This div, I'm going to give an ID of banner to. This div, I'm going to give an ID of content. And finally, this div, I'm going to give an ID of credits. Now, when we say something is an ID, that implies that it's unique. In other words, there, there can't be two things on the page with the same ID, which makes sense, right? You're not going to have two main navigation areas on your page. You might have a main navigation and a secondary navigation, all right? but you're not going to have two main navigations. So your names for your IDs need to be unique. All right? So there's only one navigation, there's only one banner, there's only one content, there's only one credits, and there's only one container. Let's go now and let's start applying styles to the different divs. For example, let's say I want to put a border around the navigation. All right. How do I do that? Well, I can't say nav like that because that will cause the browser to expect there to be a nav tag. There is no nav tag in this version of HTML anyhow. All right. There is, however, an ID of nav on my particular page. Now, I just made up the name nav. It, I could have put navigation or main navigation or main nav or anything like that. So. The fact that I called it nav, that was my choice. What I need to do to specify, hey, this isn't an HTML tag, but this is an ID that I want to apply a style to, is by putting a pound sign in front of it. So now, what that says is, okay, the thing on the page that has that ID, we want to assign a style rule to it. And we can assign whatever style rule we want to. We can go in and we can say, for example, background of some shade of gray. We can do that, of course, if we remember to save the file. And by file, I mean both files. There we go. All right. So now all divs didn't change the color, just that one div. Why? Because I didn't assign the style rule to all divs. I assigned it to the thing that has an ID of nav. So that's what this means. Pound sign at the front of it means 
a specific ID on the page, of which there should only be one. So this will change the one thing on the page that has an ID of nav. All right? Not really. Um, yeah, not, not really because the way it works, the way CSS works is it sort of takes the most specific rule, takes precedence over the more general rule. In other words, in this case, the pound sign nav rule is very specific. This one thing gets this style. So that will overrule some of the more general things, like everything in the body gets this style. To say I have a style specific for that ID is more specific than saying I want everything in the body tag to have this style. All right. Now, again, I don't really want to have a color here, but I do want a border. So I'm going to go put a border in. All right. Actually, those are tiny little dots, believe it or not. If you don't believe me, let's make them bigger dots. All right. How did I know to do that? How did I know that that's the border? Well, again, CSS is a big language. There's a lot of things going on. All right. Therefore, the things that you do often, you'll remember. Everything else, you look up. And so if you weren't sure how to create a border, you could go to the W3 school site under CSS. And under the box model, the box model is essentially how to style boxes on the screen. We'll talk a little more about that later. But one of your choices is how to style the border. And it shows a list of the different things that you can do. You can actually style the border to a crazy level of detail. For example, you can style a border to have a different thing on the top and bottom than on the sides. With some properties of CSS, there are shorthand. In other words, this border 5px solid red actually combines the border style, the border width, and the border color. So you can set those individually if you want, or you can use the shorthand and set all of them in one shot. That's usually what I do. All right, it's just, I don't know, it's more understandable for me, but you're welcome to do either of them. All right. Now, do keep in mind that, that my goal here is to, to demonstrate some things. So I am going to, uh, you know, my output might not be attractive, all right? It might not be what I would do as a final copy, but uh, I, I want to illustrate some points. Now, notice something. Notice that my banner, which is the picture of the cat and that text there goes right up against the navigation. All right. I might not want it to go right up against it. I might want to put a little bit of space between the two. Now, many of you have used the break tag, the BR tag, to achieve that space. That's actually not a good idea because that really locks you into uh, a certain format. Um, Remember, you achieve the maximum flexibility when everything that you do with appearance is in the CSS and none of it is in HTML. So putting a blank line, that's really not content. That, black line, that blank line doesn't say anything. It's just an appearance thing. It's just that you want a little bit of a space. Therefore, that sort of thing is better addressed via CSS. Well, how can you address that via CSS? You can address it with the margin property. So I can say margin 10 pixels. 
And now when I go and view this page, notice that there's a gap between there. I'll make it even more dramatic, maybe make it 50 pixels. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get to that in a second. In other words, maybe I notice what it did as I added to the margin, not only did it increase this space, it increased that space and that space. Again, this is the case of the shorthand, and we'll see more examples of this. If I say margin 50 pixels, what it will do is it will give 50 pixels going all the way around. The other thing I can do is I can specify a series of numbers. All right, what does that mean? That means zero pixels on the top, zero pixels on the right, 50 pixels on the bottom, zero pixels on the left. And so that's sort of a shorthand instead of saying them each individually. The other thing I could do is I could just say margin dot bottom. And that will only put that margin going in one direction. So now it doesn't have the margin on the top, but it does have the margin on the bottom. Um, for the last one, I could say margin dash top, margin, margin dash bottom, margin dash left, margin dash right. Now, one thing I hear all the time is I don't necessarily want this to go all the way across the screen. You know, I'll hear students say, you know, look, or, or, you know, any of these things. You can, again, you can apply a with attribute to that. With, let's say, 500px. All right and that'll make it smaller, right? Notice I didn't put a height on it. I could put a height on it as well. I'll give it a really big height of 300 pixels. Go and save it. All right. But generally, you don't have to give an attribute to everything. In other words, how high do I want that navigation to be? How tall do I want it to be? I want it tall enough to fit the content. All right. How do I say tall enough to fit the content? You say it by not saying anything. All right. Because remember, the way the browser works is it will figure out how much space is needed if you don't specify otherwise. Remember, the way your page looks is a combination of really a couple of different things. Um, one of them is the CSS that you put in to give, it, give things heights, width, colors, and so on. The other factor is the defaults built into the browser, the browser's default behavior and maybe some settings that the users have, have tweaked. So, you don't have to set every attribute. You can let the browser's defaults take over for some of them. Now, a question I get all the time is how can I center this on the page? I don't want this big, um, let, me, let me go and save this without the, the height. You know, even on, on, a bigger, on a bigger monitor it would even be more dramatic. Whereas, you know, there'd be a lot of extra space on this side and everything would be shoved on there. So that's a question I hear a lot. How can I center it? That's largely the, the, the point of that container div. Because everything is contained in the container div, all I really need to do is center the container div. And because everything's inside that container div, everything will get centered. So how do I center that? Well, first thing I do is I will give my container div a width
because if I don't give it a width, it'll assume the width is 100%, right? And it doesn't make sense to talk about centering something that is 100% of the width of something, right? It's going to take up the whole space regardless. So I'll give it a width. And I'll give it a width of, let's say, 600 pixels. Then I will say margin. Pardon me? Oh, yeah, I forgot the width, the word width. Thank you. Then I'll say margin 0px auto. All right. What does that mean? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Not typing very good today. I have 0px auto. So what does that mean? Well, again, remember that when we set the margins, we could specify four margins, and it would go like a clockwork going around. The first number we give would be the top margin, then the right margin, then the bottom margin, then the left margin. If I only specify two, it'll repeat that pattern. In other words, what this is saying is, I want the, for my container div, I want the top margin to be 0px, the right margin auto, the bottom margin 0px, and the left margin auto. And what do you suppose auto does? Auto centers it. So I'll go here and save it. And there we have our page centered. Now if you resize the window, that content gets centered inside of it. Now, you can specify many of these attributes a couple different ways. You can specify them by absolute pixels, or you can specify them by percentages. So I could say, for example, that the width of this is 75%, all right, and then, if you'll notice, well, it's kind of hard to notice. Let me go and put a background on the container, a background color on the container. As I go and make that smaller, it gets smaller and smaller that div. These are generally trickier to do use the percentages, so our first few examples will be with absolute. Now, one thing I, you, you'll notice is if I'm debugging my CSS, if it doesn't work the way that I would expect it to, what I will do is I will make, you know, I'll set like wild color backgrounds just so that I can see where everything is, all right? Because um, sometimes you may not be clear where a div starts and ends on the screen. You may think you know where it is, but it might not actually be there. So one way to go ahead and uh, make sure that it's centered is by um, putting in uh, just ridiculous colors, and then it's obvious to see that that's where that is. And then we can go and eliminate that. Now, one thing that people often do um, is they'll put a container and give it a white background so you just see a white background or another sort of neutral background so you can see the edge of the picture sort of peeking out. All right, That's a good thing to do if you have a very busy picture that you want to use as your background. Let's go in and Let's find um, a very busy picture. All right. I don't like that one. Um, I know what we can do. We can. Let's make the background of this. Let's make a background of the whole page. And let's get rid of the background of white on this. Yeah, we'll just use that tile again. Is 
that background everywhere on the page kind of gets a little distracting. All right. So what you can do is you can put a background there, and then on your container div, you can give your container div a, a different background color. And what you'll have is you'll just have the background peeking out a little bit from there. And that, that looks a lot better, I think. I'm going to go and undo this and go back to the cat picture, which was, yeah, this one, bg2.jpg. All right, so we're back to this. All right, now, maybe we don't want these links to be oriented vertically, right? We might want them to be oriented horizontally, all right? How can we do that? Do we have to change HTML? No. Well, these links are in list items, right? And list items automatically create bulleted list points. That's true, but that's just the way that they look by default. Remember, we can change anything about the appearance of a page, virtually everything, via CSS. So one of the aspects of the appearance of a tag is whether it's a block or an inline tag. Remember, tags like um, divs and paragraphs uh, and headings are block tags, that is, after they're done, there's something underneath them. You know, there's the, the next content starts underneath them. Um, we could actually go and change that to uh, allow for uh, us to change that tag instead of being treated like a block tag, treated like an inline tag. We can also get rid of the bullet point if we, if we uh, don't. Let's see how we can do that. What does this tell us? This tells us that this is a little, little bit different kind of selector still. What this is saying is any UL that is contained within the nav section. So this won't change every UL on my page. This will just change those in the nav section. Likewise, every LI. This is saying don't use a bullet point. Use nothing to indicate the list items. And this simply says make LIs act as though they're inline tags instead of, um, instead of um, block tags. So let's save this and look at them. And there's our links oriented horizontally. Now, you might say I don't want them rammed together like that. Well, again, we've learned a couple, we, we've learned one way to do it, and one way to do it is with uh, there's actually a couple ways to do it. One would be with a padding and one would be with a margin. Let's stick with the margin that we have, um, uh, that we've done so far. And what I could do is I could actually put on these LIs a margin of 20 pixels. Except, oh, it does work. Yay. And that spaces them out. Okay. All right. Now. Questions on this part so far?
Let's review what we've gone over so far. From the perspective of HTML, the only thing that we really added are divs and IDs. All right. A div simply represents a section of the page. It allows us to treat a section of a page like a unit. All right. I'm going to treat the navigation as a unit. So I'm going to put a border around all the navigation or make the navigation a different color or, or whatever. All right. IDs allow us to get more specific in our selectors. Remember, every style rule is comprised of a selector, and the selector defines what gets that particular style rule, and a set of attributes. In other words, what we want to do with that selected items, with those selected items. So if we say H1, that means all H1s get them. If we want to only style a specific element and not every element, we can do a style based on the ID. You do that by indicating a pound sign and the name of the ID. And then whatever attributes you put will only get applied to that one element that has that particular ID. We found another kind of selector where we can pick UL tags that are part of the nav. That's how you'd read that. Any UL that's included in the nav, we would want to get this style rule. All right. The other things that we talked about that are likely new to you are the border attributes. We, we uh, looked those up, the width, the margin, and so on. The style type and display of inline. Again, it's tough to know all of these. That's why the book is a good resource. The examples I'm doing in class, which I'm sort of answering the questions that I typically get, are, are good resources. And, and so on. All right. Now, question. My banner here, the way it's set now, the pictures here, and then my banner of my cats is directly underneath it. I might not want that. I might want instead for the text to be side by side with the image. First of all, why is the text underneath the image? Why doesn't the text go alongside the image? It's in an H1 tag, and H1 tags are block tags. So that means that it will create a new line. All right. How can we make a H1 tag not act like a block tag, but act like an inline tag? We can do that by saying, just as we did with the LIs, display inline. So I can say, everything in my banner that's an H1, I want it to act like an inline tag. And there we go. Now. careful observer will notice something. It shortened it. All right. It's not immediately obvious why it does that. All right. The reason it does that is that there are certain attributes that only can be applied to block tags. One of them is the width. So we can't specify the width of a inline tag. Hmm. So what do we do? We want it to sort of act like an inline tag for some of the things, but act like a block tag for other things. Well, this might sound like it's made up, but I can say inline block. <laughs> All right? This is like the taste great, less filling thing, right? You don't have to pick one or the other. It's both. So if I say inline dash block, that says kind of treat it some of the times like an inline and some for some things, rather treat it as an inline tag, namely put it alongside of it. But for other things, um, set it as, keep it as a block tag. 
and now we got the width back. Now, we might want our credits to be in a smaller print. So we could say, what do I call those credits? Font size. And I could say 0.5m. What does 0.5m mean? 0.5m means half as big as it would normally be. 1M, in other words, is the normal size of something. So 0.5M would be half as big. And so now we look at that in, ooh, kinda, kinda a little too small. Let's bump it up a little bit. Okay, that's probably reasonable. Now, don't be, how do I want to put this? Don't be confused by the specific things I'm doing. Because in addition to all the things I'm doing, there are dozens of more things that we could do besides margin and border and all that. Really, the main point of this discussion is sort of to get you in terms of thinking in terms of divs. That is, thinking of sections of the page that you can style separately. Now, these are good examples of some common things that you might want to do. So, they are good examples, but again, these aren't the only things that we're going to go over. We'll go over many of these, and there's a lot of different things that you can do depending on, on what your needs are uh, to a page. We can go and, uh, again, we can, we can go and um, make all sorts of changes um, to this uh, and set all kinds of attributes in the style based on this. Ultimately, this is still a one-column layout. Ultimately, we could do some things simply by changing the CSS to make this a two-column layout, where maybe there's a banner on the top of the page, a navigation on the left, and the main content area on the right. And we'll be looking into those things uh, going forward uh, on that. All of this starts with the notion of keeping your appearance and content separate. That is, Nothing in the HTML should have anything to do with the appearance. So no center tags, no BR tags, no attributes on HTML elements that set colors. All that sort of stuff we ought to do in CSS. I'll upload this example and we'll continue to build on this example next time.